Welcome back and thanks for staying with Morning Live. Now, the disruptive weather conditions in the Western Cape have resulted in the closure of uh, schools today in the areas of the Overberg, the Cape Winelands and the Helderberg Basin. And this comes after a severe weather warning was issued by the South African Weather Service for most parts of the province with fires, rain and heavy winds destroying infrastructure and homes over the past few days. Now, to get an update on the continuing extreme weather the conditions in the Western Cape and also the contingency plans in place. We join virtually now by Colin Diner, who's head of disaster management in the province. Colin, thanks so much for your time. Welcome to Morning Live. Good morning, Sakina, and good morning to your viewers. So, Colin, these severe weather conditions, and we were told um, in some reports that there were winds of up to 150 kilometers per hour uh, yesterday and uh, over the past few days. What is the extent of damage that has been caused by all of this extreme weather? So the warning that we received on Friday was for strong winds in areas and then to be followed by the very heavy uh, level nine uh, rainfall uh, risk that we were facing. Uh, the prefrontal system yesterday caused quite a substantial amount of fires. So starting on Saturday and then going through to tomorrow. So we, uh, sorry, to yesterday. So we had uh, quite a couple of fires. We had in the South uh, Peninsula, we had a number of fires in the Glencairn, Clavelli, Fisher. We then also had a number of, uh, of fires up in the Cape Winelands. Uh, at, at one stage, we had approximately 14 fires uh, that were raging in all those areas. And of course, with the high winds, specifically in the Drakenstein area, we had to declare what is called a code red, and that's when pretty much all your resources are, are occupied and you need to bring in resources from outside. We had a number of hospitals damaged, uh, uh, some shopping malls lost, uh, had some roof damage. Quite a couple of houses were damaged. We unfortunately had a very large informal settlement fire in Kayamundi. And with the cleanup of that, we, we had some uh, injuries with flying debris. Uh, so there's been uh, uh, quite a number of, of trees being uprooted, understanding our wildfire season was quite severe. So what happened there was we ended up with um, a lot of ground cover that, that uh, you know, had burnt away and that caused uh, quite a lot of, of movement in terms of landslides. So it's really been across the board, across the province, we have had uh, incidents it's now going to move into the um, into the uh, Overberg area and into the uh, southeastern parts of the province. Of course, that's the challenge we need to look at now. Colin, with regard to the fires, so we're talking about the winds and one can obviously uh, follow how that would exacerbate uh, fire conditions. But there's also rain about. So what is the cause of these fires in the main? Yeah, so the, the fires were very much a prefrontal condition. So what happened is the wind that was preceding the, the rain coming in uh, was really where the problem was. So uh, although we started getting rain uh, around in the city around yesterday afternoon, prior to that, we had a lot of wind and it was really the wind conditions up until, uh, so most of the fires are obviously under control now and managed uh, as the rain came in. But the, the fires were generally because of the, the prefrontal conditions of the winds coming in. You did mention uh, Kayam Nandi. So which other areas were affected by the fires and what sort of support have those communities received, Colin? Yeah, so Kayam Nandi, there's been a lot of other uh, incidents, not as major as the one in Kayam Nandi. Uh, the other areas were, were, there's been houses damaged in the southern peninsula. There was a, about nine houses that received quite substantial damage there. They were formal houses. Um, we've had uh, assistance provided, obviously, through uh, our NGOs. We have a very strong NGO structure uh, where all our different uh, uh, humanitarian NGOs buy into. We have uh, groups like the Lions Club, Gift of the Givers, uh, Heal Our Land. There's, there's a number of them that come in and then they assist uh, in the areas that we require. So it's all a coordinated effort. Uh, we look at which areas need what and then we try and move them in. Uh, this is all coordinated by our Provincial Department of Social Development here in the Disaster Centre. Um, so that's, that's what we're doing is we're looking at necessities uh, we're looking at providing just additional resources to shelter people against the rain that's coming in. Um, and that's really what I suppose a lot of today's focus will also be.
And speaking of today's focus, uh, the South African Weather Service issuing a level nine uh, warning. So what are your plans for that? And I suppose this is also an opportunity to speak to communities directly, those people who may be watching now. What can they do? Uh, so our main objective, and that's also because of, you know, the, one of the main reasons for closing the schools is absolute awareness. If people don't have to travel, uh, you know, if people are here on holiday, unfortunately, I think today's a day that they should rather just stay at their accommodations, uh, stay away from going out into the rural areas. The city is very wet. There's a, been a lot of rain this morning. So if people don't have to travel, they, uh, you know, it would be better not to travel. I think that would really be the best and most sensible option to take. Uh, we don't want people moving outside for as far as we possibly can. We know that the main issue is really just for the day. Uh, so really for today, we will continuously give updates. And then as far as our operations today is concerned, I think the most important thing is ensuring that we pick up immediate incidents, that we're able to respond. Our rescue services across the province are on high alert. They are working in various areas. We've pre-staged a lot of our resources in the high risk areas. So our objectives today is largely going to be making sure that we evacuate people where there are problem areas uh, deploying rescue services if that's needed, making sure our traffic services are in place to close roads if that's required. So we really are in what we call the acute phase now. And obviously then the, the last point would be uh, providing humanitarian assistance to the people that need it. We saw last week, Colin, um, uh, around the Huguenot Tunnel, you know, just some mind-blowing scenes of uh, the havoc that the wind caused there. Is that situation still relevant or has that subsided for the time being? So the winds uh, at this stage, uh, the, the warning for the winds are really uh, are, are reaching to a point now where that has subsided. So a lot of work was done by our provincial traffic services to make sure that uh, people would go through there safely. Uh, it was closed for a while, it has been reopened, but areas like Chapman's Peak, for example, baden Powell, um, they are still closed. So um, the, the situation, as far as the wind is concerned, we will see that uh, dissipating uh, gradually. Uh, our big concern now is the heavy downpours. Mm. And I'm not sure if you uh, have any information regarding uh, flight information at this point, because you spoke about holiday makers. And um, are you aware if there's been any disruption to the flight schedule at uh, the Cape Town International Airport? No, there's been no disruption. The, the areas where we are expecting the uh, heavy weather conditions to be uh, is outside of the airport's operations uh, range. So uh, the, we did speak to, to airport's company earlier today. Um, the indication is that with the kind of winds that were in that region, uh, they were able to carry out their operations safely. Obviously, crosswinds becomes a risk, but that is something that they are continuously monitoring. So we don't see any disruption at this stage in any air travel uh, in and out of the city of Cape Town. And then, of course, uh, I would imagine many of the participants for the Two Oceans Marathon would be concerned. Um, so have you been able to speak to the South African Weather Service about the uh, situation going forward into the weekend, for example? Yes, so South African Weather Services have indicated to us that it's going to be today and tomorrow. The weather will, although we'll still have a lot of rain tomorrow, they are seeing it clearing up by Wednesday. So at this stage, we, we don't have any concerns. We did recommend cancelling all events uh, on Sunday and today, any outdoor events that were to take place. But uh, the weather services models are telling us that by the weekend, uh, things will have returned to normal. So we don't see a risk at any stage uh, at this point. And then, Colin, of course, you mentioned the fact that um, uh, schools, the Western Cape government decided to close schools in uh, some of the affected areas, the Helderberg Basin, uh, Overberg, and of course, the Winelands for today. Um, but with regard to just the general damage, uh, have you been able to assess and have an estimate at this point of just what the extent of it is? There have been contractors have gone out. It's a bit early now, still being very much in the acute phase. It's also really difficult moving around in those areas with uh, the kind of damage to to some of the houses. To, sorry, to some of the schools. So I think at this stage, uh, because we are not in that phase yet, we have uh, 
had uh, uh, crews go in and do some repair work, but I think it will be a day or two before we could get a clearer picture on the uh, actual extent of the damage. And perhaps just a final warning in terms of where people should be uh, uh, concerned if they have to absolutely travel today? Yeah, so the biggest concerns that we have is in the Overberg region, uh, the Cape Winelands region, and then in the Helderberg region, this, the Strand uh, Gordons Bay area. If you have to travel, our traffic services are on the roads. Um, please just uh, be aware of what they, what if they are providing any warnings, if they are closing off roads, it's very important to listen to them. Uh, we will periodically on local radio stations also be giving out uh, advisories. I think it's really important if you absolutely have to travel is just to take note and then also you know uh, traffic services can't be everywhere so if there are low level bridges if there is water running over the road rather do not cross um you know it's it, it's uh, it sometimes could look like an easy option just to cross a, a low level bridge or a, a river in, uh, a road that is flooded but it takes very little water to lift a vehicle and move it, uh, you know, and then we end up with a tragedy. So I think it's just really important to take heed of those warnings. Well, Colin, thanks so much for updating us there. Colin Diner is the head of disaster management in the Western Cape and giving us an update on the extreme weather conditions that have caused damage to some parts of the Western Cape. And as we also telling us about this cut of low system that caused extreme um, uh, damage in KZN as well uh, some time ago. So now we're seeing that again and this time uh, hitting the Western Cape in a severe way. Uh, but uh, let us know your thoughts. If you have pictures, share those with us videos as well at Morning Live SABC on X.